Hi class, my name is Jorge Salmeron Bernal, and this is my presentation on Plan, Do, Study, Act. And the goal is to decrease catheter-associated urinary tract infections. Catheters and urinary tract infections. A urinary tract infection involves any part of the urinary system. This includes urethra, ureters, bladders, and kidneys. The problem, the problem is that urinary tract infections, also known as UTIs, are the most common type of healthcare associated infections. According to the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, 75% of UTIs are related to urinary catheter insertions. Catheters associated infections are linked to higher hospital costs and increased morbidity and mortality. The quality variance. Despite efforts to decrease catheter-associated catheter urinary tract infections, there was overall an increase of about 6% from 2009 to 2013. I believe that with increased efforts, we should be noticing an overall decline in catheter-associated infections. In addition, uh, based on knowledge that urinary catheters cause UTIs, healthcare providers should avoid ordering uh, catheters unless warranted or really needed. Unfortunately, as stated above, UTI, UTI rates did not slow down nor decline. Instead, the UTI rates increased. The route cost analysis. So catheter insertions, um, pretty much catheter insertions due to improper sterile technique and poor cleaning of the skin before insertion can cause UTIs. Um, catheter care, poor hygiene from healthcare staff, uh, disconnection of catheter and drain tubes, lack of regular catheter care maintenance, and poorly secure catheters resulting in pulling. All these can be also linked to uh, catheter-associated infections. But most importantly, prolonged catheter use is a major risk. Scope of the problem. Catheter-associated tract infections affect various stakeholders such as patients, providers, healthcare facility, and payers. As we already know, UTIs can have a significant impact on our patients, on our patients' recovery, and are also associated with increased mor morbidity and mortality. The healthcare facility can be significantly impacted due to non-payment of hospital-acquired infections. Stakeholders such as Medicare, the payer, will not pay for preventable hospital-acquired infections. The solution. Solutions in include um, Pretty much is continuing prolonged use of catheters. Uh, as we already know, it's a major risk for urinary tract infections. So reducing the duration of cat catheter usage and also removing uh, the catheters as soon as possible may decrease uh, urinary tract infections. We should also avoid placing urinated catheters when not needed. Ask yourself, does the patient meet criteria for catheter insertion? Also, it is very important for us as nursing staff to ma maintain a septic technique. You know, wash your hands before you insert a Foley. Make sure that every, you maintain a septic technique, everything is sterile. And always, you know, if you need help, ask another nurse to help you, you know. This way you, can, you don't have to break your sterile field. So the plan, uh, this is a plan that I designed uh, for this project. And it included, you know, rounding, rounding to identify all patients with indwelling catheters. And that's what we do per shift. Our current uh, hospital currently does this, but they only do it during the day shift. So for me, I'm a night nurse, and I think it's also very important to do this during the night shift. Um, the nurses should also, as I indicated, should review the catheter usage in a pro to review if catheter usage is appropriate dur also during the night shift. If there is any doubt, you know, contact your physician and clarify the order and, you know, kind of talk to them and see whether the order is still needed or not. And it's very important to document, you know, document, document. We've learned in nursing school that if we do not document, it never happens. Uh, discontinue catheter as soon as possible and don't wait till the morning. I know there's been a few situations where nurses had the order to discontinue the Foley, but unfortunately they waited until the morning to, do, to discontinue the catheter. And also very importantly, to provide catheter care and maintenance. Uh, so you, fortunately for my floor, um, it's very proactive with education. And there's also a few other nurses who are either in the BSM program or 
their masters and the floor manager or charge nurses the nursing staff have been all very all very cooperative in allowing to you know do these projects um, also uh, the goal for for my plan is to decrease catheter associated infections and you know overall provide better health outcomes for a patient so it's meeting criteria it's criteria met for fully insertion so this is something that i got from the cdc uh it was done in 2009 and it's criteria for catheter insertions um like, so the criteria includes acute urinary retention um bladder obstruction to improve comfort of end of life care if needed for critically ill and the need for accurate measurements of INL. For like, I work on the medical unit and um, the measurement of INL is not an approved um, reason to insert a urinary catheter. Selected surgical procedures such as GU or colorectal surgery uh, to assist in healing in open sacral or perineal wounds in incontinent patients. Need for in, intraoperative monitoring of urinary output during surgery or large volumes of fluids or diuretics anticipated. And then prolonged immobilization, potentially unstable thoracic or lumbar spine, multiple traumatic injuries such as pelvic fractures. If the patient does not meet criteria, do not insert catheter or contact to physician to clarify or discontinue orders. Assessing patient with urinary catheters plan. Identify all patients with urinary catheters. Charge nurses in my current unit are already doing this. Uh, during this project, I assisted the charge nurse in obtaining this information. Documentation should include the date and time the catheter was inserted, and orange label provided by the catheter supply company should be filed. Uh, and usually in a unit, we uh, attach it to the front of the chart, so it's, big, it's very easy to identify our patients who do have uh, urinary catheters. And then nurses should follow up and decide whether continued usage of catheters is still required. So um, during my project, I would discuss with the primary nurse the need and the reason for urinary catheters. Then we would assess the patient and evaluate whether the current condition required the use of catheters. You know, we, it's also very important to monitor the days that the patient has had this catheter inserted, as we already know that a prolonged time of catheter use is, is incre increases the rate of urinary tract infection. And also, uh, at times I would assist the primary nursing and talking to the physician if we believe that the catheter was no longer needed or if we needed additional clarification. You know, I, we all understand that, you know, sometimes we get very, very busy and we might not have time to do this, but you know, this is all our responsibility and we all should do our part in reducing urinary tract infection. So competencies. Uh, I think it's very important to provide an in-service during nursing floor release and focus on proper insertion and removal of catheter or urinary, of urinary catheters. Uh, due to the short time frame of this project, I wasn't unable to complete this intervention, but I definitely I did believe that it would be very important. However, I did assist uh, two new grads in our unit, and I was able to, you know, educate them and hop in throughout two fully insertions in, in our unit. And, you know, it's very important to focus, as I said, on the acceptance. Cap catheter care and maintenance. Uh, it's, you know, as nurses, we're always taught to, you know, gel in, gel out, but, you know, before inserting a catheter, we must make sure that you do wash your hands before we insert the catheter. Um, if the patient does have a catheter, it's very important for us, you know, to clean the catheter at least two times per day. And especially after a patient has had a bowel movement, remember to clean the catheter and make sure everything is clean so that we can avoid um, urinary tract infections very important to document care and maintenance. So part of during my, my plan or my project, I would go ahead and you know, kind of review that nurses were documenting their plan uh, in their care, their care and their maintenance of foleys. Um, and it's always very important that when we are cleaning the foleys that we clean away from the body, not towards the body. That way we can also reduce the chances of the patient getting a urinary tract infection 
And always remember to dry the catheter after cleaning and make sure that it's properly secured. It's also very important for us to educate our patients on signs and symptoms of UTI. This would include pain or burning to lower stomach, fever, blood in urine, foul smelling urine, and cloudy urine. Um, also, additional um, symptoms that may occur once the catheter is removed is like increased urinary frequency and pain and burning during urination. So data collection. Data collection will be collected on a, on a regular basis. Unfortunately, you know, I do have my personal life and wasn't able to be present every day to collect this information during my project. So I did rely on some of the information that was provided by my charge nurses. Um, and that usually included which patients did have cath catheters and when the um, police were inserted. And then after, based on, based on, once I had that information, I was able to, you know, do a big review on the charts and, you know, gather a little more of information, right? including like if nurses were doing um, catheter care and maintenance. And also, what was the time frame that these catheters have been inside our patients? Uh, there was also information that was gathered from appearance of UTI was provided, provided by a quality ma management nurse. Uh, for the month of January, there was only one identified UTI in the junior. And so far for February, we're still pending the results. However, I, we believe that it's currently at this time zero. Um, um, during this time frame, you know, we do have limited data. Uh, this could be because, of course, at times, you know, our patients were discharged and, you know, the catheters were moved a few hours prior to discharge and we weren't able to, I wasn't able to obtain additional information whether this patient was having any urinary tract infection symptoms post-discharge. Um, so analysis of data, as I said, uh, during the month of December, there was three incidents of UTIs and in January, we had one. Currently, we don't have any documented urinary tract infections. Uh, data is only limited to our floor. However, I think it would be very interesting to evaluate long-term data uh, of these interventions and be able to assess just in within our unit if there was a significant change. And then after that, it would be important to you know evaluate hospital-wide and other units to see what we're doing, if it's working, and if it's not working, what are other units doing in order to decrease their overall incidence of urinary tract infections? Um, as I said, it's very important to monitor the amount of insertions we're doing at our hospital, but most importantly, if we're not doing uh, insertion of police, our patients will not get catheter-associated uh, urinary tract infections, and this overall will decrease the rate of urinary tract infections. So definitely decreasing catheter usage is very important. Um, based on just the information that I was able to collect during our during my time doing this project, you know, we I was able to see that we are meeting our goals. You know, um, however I must give some credit to also to quality management because they have also recently been been very strict in um, in urine like following up on patients who have urinary catheters and they've been very proactive in having the nurses also follow up and uh, contact physicians to see if these folies are indeed necessary and discontinue it. I believe that during night shift, it's also our responsibility as well to do these assessments and contact physicians to you know, discontinue these folies if we believe they are no longer needed. So next steps. Uh, as I said, you know, do, during quarterly, I think it would be very important to, you know, provide more education to our nurses. Um, as I said, education can also be used as a strategy to prevent catheter-associated urinary tract infections. Uh, I read a study conducted by Monina Desmudo uh, that created a study that I was aimed to answer. What is the impact of uh, coffee, which is uh, catheter-associated urinary tract infection education packages, on nurses, uh, on nurses' knowledge of indwelling catheter management? The study concluded that education had a significant impact on the overall knowledge of indwelling 
catheter management and how to prevent catheter associated infections. In addition, additional education did not only improve the gaps in nurses' knowledge, but it also improved their practice. So next step continuing. In order to continue decreasing catheter associated infections, we need to continue to follow these interventions. One, assess if the use of urinary catheters is still appropriate. Is the continued use of catheters still required? If it's not, contact their physicians and clarify with them. Complete catheter, catheter care and maintenance at least twice a day, and I said remember document. When considering catheter, uh, maintaining a septic technique and wash your hands before the procedure, and of course after the procedure. Uh, educate pa uh, our patients about signs and symptoms of urinary tract infection and encourage reporting. Um, and that way, when these, our patients do start having sensitive symptoms of infections, we can go ahead and, you know, do our own assessment and evaluate contact of physicians and be able to get orders and the appropriate interventions to, you know, preventing these symptoms from becoming worse. And then in order for these interventions to be successful, it's very important for us to have team effort. Um, all the nurses, physicians must understand that there is a significant link between catheters and associated infections. All staff members must do their own part to avoid catheter-associated tract infections and follow the interventions that are provided by the unit. Uh, patients who already have a catheter place, you know, they should have their catheters regularly, regularly assessed by nursing staff and determine if it is still required. I think that it should also be part of the physician's job as well to, you know, do follow-ups and, you know, speak to the nurses regarding the use of catheters. Um, you know, when physicians do their roundings, they, they should also notice the catheter and ask the nurse, you know, questions if they have any concerns about it. So what would be the consequences of not meeting our goals? Um, if, we, if the goals are not met, the rate, the rate of catheter-associated tract infections will not decline. As we already said, despite us, you know, there being um, interventions that should have been done, uh, there was actually an increase previously of catheter-associated infections. I think the study said from 2009 to 2013, there was an increase of 6%. Um, catheter-associated infections are associated with increased morbidity and mortality. There's increased hospital stays, and increased hospital expenses, and overall decreased patient satisfaction. I believe you know our patients expect us to do our best, our best job. You know, provide quality work. They don't go in there believing like they're going to get a urinary tract infection. And this, you know, as I said, it's going to increase your overall hospital stay. They're going to be more uncomfortable. And I think we all owe it to our patients in our profession to do our best and follow interventions and protocols in order to decrease overall catheter associated infections. Uh, well, I thank you for everybody for your time. Uh, these are my references that I used during my study. And it was a pleasure actually being able to work with my unit and be able to present my study, what I found in my project to, you know, nursing staff. Thank you.